So the next topic we're going to discuss is service level agreements um, and timers that might go with that. So these are called SLAs. So just a little bit of pre-information here. So SLAs are service level agreements. Um, back in CRM 2013, <clears throat> they released this feature called SLAs. Okay, and so we call those standard SLAs. And then when CRM 2015 came out up through today, they enhanced that functionality and, and called that enhanced SLAs. So pretty creative there. So, but there are definitely some differences. So even in the current version of Dynamics 365, um, you can create a standard SLA or you can create, create an enhanced SLA. And I'll show you that in a second here. But when you go create one, it'll say, all right, which one are you creating? Is it gonna be a standard one or an enhanced one? Um, the default is based on the, the entitlement with the account. So we haven't talked about entitlement yet. We're gonna talk about that next after SLAs, but an entitlement can store a default SLA and then you, you will associate an entitlement like with an account record in CRM, okay? Now today we're gonna to talk kind of SLAs in, in light of you know case management and customer service, but in technically other entities can have entitlements. I'm sorry, can have SLAs. So we might have an SLA on a case, of course, and uh, but you can also have SLAs like on a quote or an activity or an order or an invoice. So any record that you entered, you could have a service level agreement. Like uh, maybe when we're entering a quote, it might be, hey, I want <clears throat> this quote to be in the active stage, so not in draft, but in active stage within two days. And you could have a timer on that quote that says, hey, you've got 30 minutes left to get that quote activated. Maybe a dumb example, but you could do that. So with case management, of course, we want to respond to our customers quickly. Um, and so we might set up these service level agreements to say, hey, we've got a four hour window to at least respond to that customer with a first response. <clears throat> you might wanna set up an SLA for resolving a case. <clears throat> so we might respond to you in the first four hours, but we'll, we'll, res we'll resolve that case in 24 or 48 hours, whatever the might, case might be. Okay, you can also put SLAs on custom entities. <clears throat> so again, we talked about there's uh, different types of SLAs, there's enhanced and there's standard. So with enhanced SLAs, um, these are the things that you can do that you cannot do in standard. So for example, is you can use them on custom entities. Just kind of talked about that. You can pause an SLA timer where you cannot do that with standard. So if for some reason you have this case, it's got an SLA against it, and the customer is not getting back to you, you have the means of pausing that so that you're not failing your uh, service level agreements. It can take success actions. So if you, we are successful and we met the 48 hour resolving case, um, there can be an action like a workflow that runs um, after that. Um, the time is tracked directly um, on the record. Um, so that's actually for a standard SLA. For the enhanced one, we use quick view forms to show the timers and KPI data. And that'll make sense when we go a little bit further here. So again, we can pause. Um, this feature was introduced, with, so standard was introduced in 2013. It does not support the pause resume. Um, you cannot convert your standard SLAs to enhance. They gotta be set up from scratch. Um, and then the KPIs themselves <clears throat> were stamped on right on the case record. So like, for example, that initial contact, if that happened, there was a field right on the case said, hey, it was initial contact made, and there'd be a date and time stamp on there. Um, with the enhanced, the SLA time calculations can get paused. Um, the pause case statuses can be configured. So if you do pause it, you can configure the status to be updated on the case. Um, the on hold time will be tracked as well. So how long was it paused for, okay? Um, this is probably the biggest one, this second to the last point here. The SLA statuses and times are tracked in a separate entity. So it's an entity that's related to the case entity or whatever entity we're tracking an SLA on. So you can have multiple um, SLA statuses. They're not just fields being updated on the case. You have a, a separate record that has that SLA information. 
Okay, let's go on. So again, just some more differences between the SLA types. Um, I think we've kind of hit on these already, but basically um, there's a separate record for the standard S or the enhanced SLAs. And then to show them like on a case form, we can't just put fields from the case entity on the form. We will be putting like a quick view form as well as maybe a subgrid of information. So this is where they're set up. Um, I'm gonna actually flip again back into dynamics here. And let's go back into service management is where they live. And here's the service level agreements. And we're just gonna call up this one here. So this is actually a standard SLA, uh, but they're set up the same way. Here's that field that we will describe whether it's a standard or an enhanced one. Okay, so again, allow pause and resume. We cannot do that with a standard one, but if this happened to be an extended one, we would be able to say yes, do that, or don't allow that. So we're just setting up basically an SLA. This one's saying basically it's a six and a 16 hour one. Now what's the difference? Well, maybe if you're like a gold level support customer, we're gonna respond to you within the first six hours. But if you're not gold service level customer, then we basically allow two days to respond to you. That's kind of the concept behind this one. This is just a test one that we set up. Um, so the, the SLA record is pretty simple to set up, but then you all have what's called an SLA detail record. So similar to that case creation, these are the actual rules. These follow an order. So it's gonna first see, do I meet this rule? And if not, then do I meet this one? And if not, it'll go down to the next one. So again, there'll be two arrows here where you wanna get these in the right order. Because in theory, again, depending on what your rule is, it could meet more than one of these criteria, but it can only really follow one, right? So that's why the order of these important is, or the order of these is very important. All right, let's just look at this first one here. So I'm gonna double click on that first one. So this is the, the six hour response. So basically we're setting up kind of like an advanced find, what are our criteria that this rule should be used? So basically you're seeing that the, there's a field on the case record itself called the priority field. If that equals high or very high, go ahead and follow this rule. And then we're also basically saying that there needs to be an entitlement. So that you have to have an entitlement on your customer record for this to happen. Otherwise you probably follow the one to two day. If you don't have an entitlement, you're just kind of a regular customer. Okay, so that's what we're saying. If this rule is applicable, if these are true, and then what we're setting down here is what is the success criteria? So basically we're looking at the a date field on there called the first response sent. Okay, and that gets filled in automatically on the case. If that equals yes, we're, we consider this rule as being successful. If that never gets filled in as a yes, after six hours, we would consider this to be failed, okay? And then below here, you can set up failure action items and um, warning action items. And there's actually a, um, a successful action item if this was an enhanced SLA. But basically, we're just updating something on the case record. So again, if after six hours we fail, we could update something on the case record, which could then maybe trigger a workflow or something like that. Um, we can also update something on the case record if it was a warning. Okay, and these are configured again, just like the case creation rule that we saw, or just like workflow. This looks like the case form and you can put values in here. You can hard code values, you can get values from other areas. So that's the rule setup. Um, let me go back to my PowerPoint here. Okay, again, I think we covered all this. So what's coming up here is this is, a, <clears throat> this is an enhanced SLA, and this is what it would look like on the case form um, for your timers, okay? I didn't have an example to show you in my live CRM system here, but this is a good example, print screen here. So really what you're looking at here is this timer is a quick, view form. 
that's set up on the SLA um, detail records. That's that other associated record to the case. So that's a quick view form that can get set up. Now there's plenty of videos out there on the internet that talk about setting this up. The area on the right is a, a subgrid. So there's a subgrid put on our case form to show us in this example here, you can see there's two records, right? There's a first response KPI, and then there's re resolved by KPI. And each one of those has a status. And based on that status, that considers whether we're in the warning period or in the expired period or in the successful period. So you can see what you get with this, but basically if we're kind of in the warning period, this timer will be counting down that we need to contact them within two minutes and 49 seconds or we're going to be basically in the failure period. Um, and then when you reach that failure period, um, you can then have just a expired flag come up here. Okay, and then if it was successful, like we met that criteria and we were successful, basically say stop the timer and then just show that we were successful. So again, these can be shown right on your case form. There's lots of videos on the internet about setting this up. This is not something that's just out of the box. So you basically have to set up your SLA records and then put your timers on your case form. And again, that's done with a quick view form and a subgrid. And again, that can be found on the internet pretty easily.